disrespect to Ben or, or Thomas, but uh, it'd have to be George Washington's Tavern Porter. I mean, you figure the guy rotted his teeth out on something. It was probably beer because that porter tasted so good. And uh, I don't know, I, I'd be willing to rot my teeth out right alongside him, really. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to choose one. But if I was going to choose one, I would have to choose Ben Franklin because he's a true Philadelphian. He's the guy that really walked these streets. He's the guy that really you would see in the tavern drinking. And I think that's the kind of guy I would want to have uh, my beer with. So these colonial folks, or pre-colonial folks, whoever, were no dummies and they needed to get to their river. So there were two spots, Dock Street and right here. And lo and behold, a tavern showed up very quickly at these accessible spots, rather than down near the, Lib the future Liberty Bell and all that, that other kind of history, the, the revolutionary history that came much later. And I decided to make a little recreation of a colonial tavern. I managed somehow to go from just being a, a everyday newspaper reporter for my entire career to uh, writing just about beer. That's all I do today is, is write about beer. And, you know, I find it such a, a great area to work on. I mean, I, it's not just about beer for me. It's about the people. And bars are that kind of a place for me to get stories. I mean, any good reporter goes to a bar to, uh, to get, you know, great stories. And... Those great stories happen to focus on beer for me. A friend of mine told me uh, a few years ago that if you buy a man a beer, you'll waste an afternoon. If you teach a man to brew, you'll waste a lifetime. So taking that into account, I, I am all in in the beer culture. I started you know, as, you know, as early as uh, high school, finding out about different beers, looking into different things. Mostly back then it was all imports and watching the, the whole culture grow from my very first uh, an Anchor Steam at Dunderbox in the Lehigh Valley Mall, I was interested in any kind of beer that was made in America that wasn't a mass-produced beer. And they just started popping up out of, out of nowhere, out of everywhere, it was great. Thomas Jefferson had an English brewer come over to Monticello and they would produce a, uh, George Washington made his own. But what's interesting, really interesting, was to me when I first got involved, which has been now since 93 when I first took over the, the city tavern, is the, the amount of beer that was used for marinating. And obviously it's because when you marinate with alcohol, the alcohol acts as a preservative and as a tenderizer as well. So many of the recipes we have here in the city tavern utilizes beer in its marination process, or what we also call in technical term, deglazing. In other words, if you take a, a, a pork medallion in a pan and some greens on it, and then you deglaze it with, uh, with an ale, it's excellent. So we use a lot of that. Uh, oh, Benjamin! <laughs> Benjamin, that's who we want to fucking drink with him. <laughs> yeah, but you know what beer makes you fat? I wouldn't want to drink beer. Anything light, I want to drink something like Coors Light. How about that? Coors Light, Bud Light, anything makes you light. Makes fat. Yeah, and I got a fat booty, so. Yeah, right there. These are the Vine Street steps. It provided access from, for the public to get down to the waterfront. So I just walked down from Front Street down to Water Street, which was on the edge of the Delaware River. This is where they built wharfs. And in front of the Penny Pot Tavern, there was one of the earliest shipbuilding yards in the city. So this was a scene of a lot of activity in the earliest days of the city. The Penny Pot Tavern got its start in the late 1600s possibly as early as 1682, when it's believed that the first English child was born right here in this block. But about a century later, Robert Hare came from England and started the first Porter Beer Brewery in America right around the corner on Callis Hill Street at 2nd Street. And this, as far as we know, was the first Porter brewed in America in 1775. Here we are in the basement of the building that has the replica of the Penny Pot Tavern. And most of the houses on this block have caves built down in the basement. And as the story goes, when the settlers first came here, many of them dug caves into the ground and thatched a roof over top 
to get through the first winter while they were waiting for William Penn to get here and assign the lots to, to find out where they were going to live. But as the story goes, the first English child was born in a cave at this location and the cave later became what they called a rude tavern known as the Penny Pot.